Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, we follow Stuart Wilson with his trusty savage rimfire on crow control. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. I've spent the last week or so with some shorter sessions um, grabbing an hour here, an hour there um, freshly filled my squirrel feeders so they'll be to, to look at at some point um, and this afternoon I've had um, a carrion crow out of this water trough and as I rocked up before I pretty much even got out of the car, I was lucky enough to get onto a, a carrying crow that was on, a, on one of the uh, freshly muck spread fields and managed to, to dab him without him realizing that I was even there. So um, that was a bonus one, really. Um, there's a few magpies kicking about here as well that I haven't managed to sort of catch up with just yet. Um, but over the next, I don't know, week, 10 days, hopefully, if they start to become accustomed to seeing an odd dead rabbit every now and again, um, I may just get an opportunity on them as well. Set up. I've got the big camera set up, pointing across at these uh, decoys that I've got out. Um, and get the little savage loaded up and ready to go and sit out and see if we can get okay.
got into this seat about eight o'clock, so that's taken two hours to get one carrying crow. Um, I've had my pies shouting at me in the trees. I had one briefly come onto the water trough, but he wasn't there for long enough for me to get onto him. A various carrying crow sort of landed a little bit further out. That's the first carrying that's sort of come in. Um, and as luck would have it, he was sort of by himself, so it shouldn't have disturbed anything else. I would imagine that as soon as any crows come over, this, this crow that's uh, dropped down there that looks decidedly um, dead rather than sort of propped up in some sort of simulated I'm a, a live decoy um, that they'll shout and, and give it big licks um, that might just sort of pull something into to land on the, on the water trough um, but we'll give it another hour or so um, and if anything sort of does sort of pop over um, we'll try and get onto it. I think we're done now. Um, there's been a few carrying crows coming over us um, and there's no more shouting. They're not questioning or protesting at my uh, decoy pattern now. They're just going, I ain't landing there. There's a couple of landed out sort of, I don't know, 150, 200 yards. And then the rest have sort of been coming over and just going, yeah, I'm not even thinking about stopping there. So I would think that uh, based on the if there are some different groups of carriers that have been coming over, each of those groups now have watched one of their boys get a smack and come into my decoy pan. Um, so they're just they're not having it anymore. So I'm going to get the birds that are shot gathered up and uh, back onto the truck. It may be that they go into the freezer as uh, decoys for another day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get packed up. the end of the session um 
I've had a few short sessions trying to dab some carrion crows. Um, limited success to be fair, getting one or two on each sort of session. Um, one off the water trough, one pretty much as I sort of pulled out of the car, which was a, an opportune one, so it probably doesn't sort of count as a, the stealthiest of carrion crows that I've ever shot. Um, and then on this freshly drilled um, pasture, um, they've been sort of coming in. So I took the decision this morning, get myself up and out of bed, and fetched some of the carrions that I'd already shot, and popped two of those out, and then put a magpie onto the water trough and after a little bit of a slow start thinking that I may not get anything I've ended up bagging four really good carrions. Um, really quite exciting sport. Um, sat up in my little, I call it my silage Wendy house, three foot by four foot with camo scrim round the outside, camera pointing out one side and then trying to sneak the gun out to get at any of the carrion crows that may, may land within range. Um, They've been shouting at me, they've been flying round the little box, trying to sort of peep in. Um, so I've had a full face veil and gloves on as much of the time as I possibly could. And then trying to sneak the gun out of the corner of the um, box, just underneath some of the scrim, if something had sort of landed or was looking like it was going to land, as they're sort of getting lower and lower and they're you know, putting their legs down and thinking, right, we could be in here. Um, and we've had quite a lucky day, to be fair. We've got four, four good carriers, so... Really impressed with the little uh, Savage BV uh, stainless laminate thumb hole. Um, it's been a, a cracking little gun. I think I've had one carrion that sort of gave a, a little bit of a flick. He dropped onto his back. And I think that was more operator error than anything. Um, I'd taken the shot just ever slightly out to the side, uh, but by the time I got down, he was he was dead on the grass. So yeah, cracking little session and uh, more than pleased with the little Savage. Stainless steel tubular action and a 16 inch, I would say varmint profile, stainless steel barrel, um, threaded half inch UNF, makes for a really sort of compact little item for hunting out of a vehicle or in the boxes, you're not sort of cracking, I mean it, it really is a, a nice compact little rifle and even with the mod extending it 4 to 5 inches, it's not unwieldy at that. To the front of the fore end, you've got two sling studs which allows you to put the bipod on a slightly longer extension or run with a sling forward and then have the facility to be able to take a bipod on and off without removing your sling which, you know, for the variety of sort of jobs that I do shooting wise, you know, that can be quite handy. The laminate stocks, got the ventilations to the front fully free floated and moving back to a thumb hole with a nice high comb which puts your eye perfectly in line for scoped shooting which is really what the rifle is designed for. The butt pad is grippy enough but not too grippy. It goes into the shoulder and when you press it into the shoulder it stays where it's put. Cycling the action. short throw of the bolt which stops it from fouling with the optic and as you cycle back pings a case out and then cycle forward takes another round out of the magazine. The trigger has a the accu trigger so it's got a almost like a two-stage feel to it even though the blade isn't moving on this first stage it's basically a, a blade that sits in the center of the trigger which allows you a, a feel before your finger is to the trigger and then, as you take up, it fires as normal. It also has a safety feature in that if the trigger is caught without the blade being pressed, it effectively puts the bolt into like a safe mode, it catches, it won't drop the sear fully, so it will not fire. So you have to engage the blade in the middle and then pull the trigger. If you do get to that situation where you have caught the trigger, and it's gone into effectively a safe mode where the bolt hasn't dropped. Cycle up, catch the round that was in the chamber, and then start again. A nice little two-stage stroke safety feature. I do like thumb hole stocks, and I like the way they 
handle, the way they feel in the hand, and as a general purpose, varmint in, bunny bash in rifle. It's been a cracking little gun over the last few months that I've been using it. Stuart clearly getting on well with the Savage there, and now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The Welsh Environment Minister has responded to criticism over plans to stop pheasant shooting on Welsh public land. Hannah Blythyn told Basque that she expected the ban to affect less than 1% of shooting enterprises in Wales and would have a minimal impact on the wider shooting industry. She also said she wouldn't reply to the individual shooters who contacted her about the issue. Basque said her response simply wasn't good enough. In a blow for goose shooters, white-fronted geese have been removed from the quarry list. They weren't being shot anyway as there has been a voluntary moratorium in place for 40 years, but it sets a worrying precedent for future legal decisions if the government isn't prepared to accept that self-regulation is enough. The government itself admitted that the moratorium was working effectively and being adhered to, but decided to go ahead with the ban anyway. There's been another unsuccessful prosecution against Huntsman. This time, two men from the Buccleuch Foxhounds in Scotland were found not guilty of hunting a wild mammal with dogs. The Countryside Alliance for Scotland said the allegations against them had been politically motivated and not based on credible evidence, and that the entire trial was a long, stressful and expensive process which should never have happened. And finally, don't forget to respond to the reader surveys for your favourite shooting mags. Sporting Rifle, Airgun Magazine, Clay Shooting and Bow International are all hosting surveys online, but don't wait around so they all close at the end of the month. We want to know what you like about the mags, what you don't, and what you'd do if you were the editor. To respond, just head to the reader survey section on the magazine websites. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>